Before starting this, I'm going to ask you to put yourself into the mindset of somebody who smoked a weed, because this has to be one of the most stoner thoughts that I've ever had. Here, let me help you out with that. Hey man, do you want to watch Rick and Morty? I've just kind of been thinking about that cloud. I feel like that would kind of like really suck to be called fart. Hey, did you finish those Doritos? Are you there yet? Because here it comes. The internet, this thing that you normally think about of going on your phone up into the cloud to get any kind of information that you want is actually entirely an underground series of boobs. But it is. It's an underground network of cables. And for whatever reason, when I was thinking about that and I saw that, it just blew my mind. Now, I can't say entirely underwater because everything I've read and watched says that it's 99% on these underground cables. But you know what? No, it's 100% underwater. I'm braver than Linus Tech Tips. The idea for having the cables running under the water was to be able to connect up the world back in the times of telegrams. During that time, to be able to send somebody a message internationally, the only way you would be able to do it is by basically just writing a letter, putting it on a boat and letting it go there, which going from Europe to America could sometimes take up to 14 days. So people were determined to be able to find a quicker way to do this. So in 1850, the English and the French set up a line underneath the sea where they'd be able to communicate by telegram to one another very quickly. It seems like it was a step in the right direction. And only eight years later in 1858, the first international cable over a long distance was placed running from Canada to Ireland. And with that cable, you could receive a telegram Telegram in two minutes. That seems like a lot now, but going from 14 days down to two minutes is revolutionary and would have blown people's minds at the time. Can you imagine if you were talking about going on a road trip from one side of the US to another and just being able to go there instead of a 14 day road trip, making it in two minutes? That is an insane thought to have. I would at least assume it felt a lot like this. I don't know how people reacted at the time because... Well, quite frankly, they're all dead. As of this video, there's 552 active or planned subsea internet cables, which roughly translates to 1.4 million kilometers of cables connecting the world, which for reference is the size of the sun, which is an insane comparison when you just look at the size of the two of these things. The longest of these cables is one that's currently being made called the Two Africa Cable. Can you guess where this one's going? In late 2022, it was connected to Marseille in France, and it's planned to connect to 33 different countries and be 45,000 kilometers long. The thing that gets me is that when you hear about these cables and how important they are, you'd think that you'd be dealing with some pretty heavy duty stuff. But in reality, the cables are only the size of a can of Coke and really they're just filled with things to protect the actual fiber optic inside of it. And if you peel away all of the extra layers of things surrounding the actual inside of this cable, that's all it is, some fiber optic cables. The reason that something that could so easily be damaged is used under the water is is because of how good it is at sending data. If you don't know, fiber optic is what's used to be able to send internet even into your homes most of the time. What it does is that it uses different light waves to be able to send the data across the entire cable, which at the moment allows it to have 352 terabytes per second speed, which means that if you were sitting at home directly connected into the subsea internet, you would be able to download something at 44,000 gigabytes a second. That is almost one Warzone update. And for those of you glazing over because all it is is just numbers that I'm saying, look at this. You see how the lasers gone through the water? That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's pretty sick. I thought it was pretty cool too. That's how the internet works. Me talking to you is this laser that's being shot through the water. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. I just want to keep watching it. I don't want to stop. I could watch this all day. It's really cool. The way that they're able to actually put in these cables into the ocean is that they just dig a trench, they put in the cable, and then eventually the current will move enough sand over the top of it so that most sea life doesn't find it. They got this cool little triangle thing that they use for it, but it's really cool. It looks really interesting. And when they do this, they just sit on a massive boat and let the cable run off of the side of it. But who are they? To be entirely original, this is where it gets a little. 1984. A lot of the cables are transitioning to being owned by tech companies now. So for example, Meta, uh, Google, and Amazon all are starting to have a lot of ownership over these cables. The African cable I was talking about earlier actually is owned by Meta and it's being heavily implemented by them with some other owners involved too. And when I say other owners, it can be an enormous number. One cable has 94 different owners that are responsible for different sections of the cable, which basically 
basically means that if a cable ever breaks, the owner of that section is responsible for repairing it. Surprisingly, these cables get damaged all the time, and there's probably at least five boats that are out at the moment that are repairing these cables as we speak. That's right. As we speak. I can hear you. Don't turn around. I love to think that half of the people watching this just then were like, no, I don't need to turn around. There's nobody behind me. And the other half are just on a loop now saying, I don't need to look. There's nothing behind me. I don't need to look. There's nothing behind me. If a cable is broken, like the ones are now as we're speaking, it will send an alert to the people that monitor the cable. And then they will notify the person who owns that section of the cable so that they can go out and repair it. What they'll also do is they'll be able to redirect the traffic off of that cable and send it out to one of the others so that there's no noticeable difference in the internet speed. Just a random fact that I liked was that they use repeaters every 80 kilometers just to keep the signal going at like just the right amount of speed. My redstone engineer brain was like, yeah, nah, see, that's, they get it. They understand. We are the same. To find the section of broken cable, they're able to get it so that the cable emits a signal which a boat is then able to detect and then can send a little robot down to grab. That's pretty cool. I like robots. Do you like robots? Do you like the movie Wally? -E? Do you like the YouTube channel Michael Reeves? Iron Giant! Iron Giant! I'm watching that later. Iron Giant! <laughs> and when they do find the broken section of cable, they'll kind of just splice it either side and then be able to repair the inside of it so that the fiber optic is all lined up again. Considering how often these break though, it does make you think, is this really the best way to be able to do this instead of just sending it up to the sky where, you know, what's going to break about the sky? The sky is falling! The sky is falling! I didn't even write this in the video, but doing the satellite would actually just be way more expensive too. Cause like an internet cable breaks, you just go down and you just repair it. But like a satellite, you gotta fly up to space to fix that shit. Back in 2012, Hurricane Sandy actually knocked out some of these cables. And this happens as well with some of Japan's earthquakes. And a lot of the time it's also just fishing boats that drop an anchor directly onto it, which is just an unlucky shot really. Like think about how big the ocean is. Having these cables running underwater as well opens us up to the possibility that most people would never even think of. Spying. Back during the Cold War, the US used to actually bug the undersea cable that ran around Russia. They were able to just hear any communication coming along it, all unencrypted, all just in Russian, because they had no idea. But also the Cold War's done, so I can't really imagine anything like this would ever really happen. Like, I can't imagine that like any internet cable around China, North Korea, or Russia. I, I don't think that this guy would ever want to do that. I'm not spying. I just wanted to know what Xi Jinping had for supper. Australia stopped a line being built by China around Indonesia because of this fear of bugging, but come on, that was Scott Morrison. When he heard the word bugging, he probably thought to himself, well, bugs were quite annoying during my time in Hawaii while the entire country that I'm in charge of was on fire, so you can consider me the bug zapper of the South China Sea. Spy bug. Despite global spying, because that's going to happen regardless, what actual reason do we have to change over? At the moment, you do hear a lot about Starlink as being offered up as an alternative to undersea cables, and it is helping a lot of people that don't have access to internet in remote rural areas. Regardless of what you think about Elon Musk, Starlink is actually a revolutionary step in the way that internet is being delivered to the general public. There are people that are in rural areas of Australia that now have reliable internet, where Whereas before, not so much. The only problem with Starlink at the moment is that it is a lot more expensive than just regular internet connections. The same way that 10 years ago, buying an electric car was a lot more expensive than just buying a petrol car. Whereas now you have states like California that are pushing for people to be able to buy electric cars to help the environment. An Australian reference, a Californian reference, uh, and a game reference. Uh, do you think Master Chief uses Starlink? Apparently among people who actually know what they're talking about and not just a YouTuber who watched three hours of documentaries on this and went, yep, I'm as informed as I need to be. The argument's coming down to ethernet versus Wi-Fi. I guess that a physical connection would always be faster because considering that the information that's being sent along these cables are traveling at just below the speed of light compared to Starlink, which at least in Australia is a lot slower than what regular good internet is. 
Regular and good, same sides of the same coin. I think the reason that this caught my attention was because it's just insane to me the thought of getting onto a Discord call with one of my friends from the US. When I sat down and thought about being in a call with him, it just boggled my mind the fact that my voice has to go to this microphone, into my computer, to my modem, to my node, it does something here. I don't really know. It gets a little bit blurry for me. Travels under the fucking Pacific Ocean. Then over to California where it lands. That's where our connections are, by the way. The more you know. Again, some weird little thing gets sent out to wherever he is. It goes to the node, his modem, his computer, and into his headphones. And that takes two seconds? And the fact that this all isn't just some cloud that's sitting up there. And it's just a cable that in some places is only three meters below the surface? That is crazy to me. Now, I could be an outlier on finding this super interesting, but if you're still here and listening, I would guess that you probably found this interesting too. You know what else you'll find interesting? Subscribing, because you can see what I'm coming out with next week and the week after. Oh, you don't know. What's it going to be? It's going to be a gaming video next week, and there will be another just talking video the week after. So if you, you know, if you like either of those, then you should hit subscribe. Okay, bye.